So now what if I were to take that newly revised uh, tree and give it an insert 75. Our normal binary search tree rules apply and so as a result 75 would come to the right of 50. However, this is where we run into a, a new kind of example. We were talking about how a zig had no grandparent, but we noticed that 75 happens to have a grandparent. And so what we call this is something we like to describe as a zig zig. So the idea behind a zig zig kind of structure is it has a parent, it has a parent and grandparent. But that's not the only uh, thing that makes it a uh, zig zig. If we take a look at the relationship between parent and grandparent, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give them sort of the same values. So if I happen to have some Z, some grandparent, some Y, and some X, some node, the relationship between the Z and the Y is going to be the same as the relationship between the Y and the X. Notice what I mean here. If I take a look at the relationship, the Y is the right child of the Z. Same kind of things going on here uh, with X. The X is the right child of the Y. So uh, I would say uh, node has same relationship relationship uh, with parent Y as Y has with grandparent Z. Again, this applies on both cases. So I could also happen to have uh, some grandparent with some left child and that having some left child. So I've established what a zig zig structure looks like. How do I resolve it? So the things that we have to do are uh, similar to a trinode restructuring, but slightly different. So if I come down, and I'll just make it so that we can see uh, this structure one more time. What I want to do is I want to take this x and move it to root. But by doing so, I still need to maintain the binary search tree laws. I can't just make 75 here because uh, then where do I put the 25? Oh, I put it here. But then So how I structure this is I look at my subtrees. As we've established, even though there's nothing here, there's sort of a uh, potential subtree 1, a potential subtree 2, and a potential sub three. Subtree three and four here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to effectively tilt this over using the parent as sort of my my tilting block, and that will cause x to be uh, the new top. So, in this case, you see that x will become the new top. Y will become sort of that uh, left child of x and the grandparent is now going to become the child of x. You can actually see basically if we find ourselves in a right zigzag, we just turn it into a left zigzag with you know, x and y reversed. I don't want to say that like definitively cuz little parts of me inside are going, "No, don't don't do that." But the important thing is where do I put t1, t2, t3, t4? Because even though we're dealing with only three nodes right now, this is always going to be the case. Well, if we happen to kind of work it, we would put T1 on Z, and we would put T2 on Z. The entire premise is, as always, T1 is less than Z, so it happens to be the left child. T2 happens to be greater than Z, but still less than Y. Well, if we happen to notice, that's less than Y, being a left child, and greater than Z. As you can see, we would continue this same sort of pattern where y gets t3 because it's greater than y but less than x, greater than y but less than x, and x would get t4. 
So if we were to apply the zigzag uh, sort of tilt, if you will, to our current tree, what we should see is that 75 is going to become the new root, 50 is going to become the sort of parent, uh, the Y, and 25 will be the new leaf node. Just as a, once again, stressing this fact, we're no longer dealing with trying to make something a balanced search tree. We're dealing with something being moved to the root. Again, AVLs were self-balancing. Splays, on the other hand, are not. They're just whatever was the last access node, it gets to go to the top.